I think we're, there we go. Now we got some audio. Hey, hey, everybody. Good to have each and every one of you with us this Saturday evening. And uh, give everybody just a few more minutes to get logged on. Uh, it's 6 o'clock right now. So if you're logged on and you are watching with us, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know that you're here. But uh, we're going to give everybody a few more minutes uh, to get logged on. So we'll be right back with you. You'll get to look at me on camera for just a minute. But we're going to give everybody a few more minutes, like I said, to get logged on. Join in with us. Uh, before we get Saturday evening prayer service started. But like I said, if you are watching, go ahead and leave me a comment right there in the comment section. Let me know you're here. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining with us. But we'll be right back right after this. Welcome to Studio A in downtown historic Adrian, Michigan. You're listening to Adrian FFWB Radio. people join in as we go along but hey thank you for being with us this evening here on prayer service live this saturday night hey i hope everyone is doing well hope everyone is blessed and as always go ahead and leave your prayer requests praise reports testimonials comments whatever you might have right there in the comments section and i will try to read those throughout the broadcast and uh so go ahead and do that and uh as we continue to get logged on i want to thank everybody for being with me this evening and for those who may watch this video later, I hope you are doing well. Hope your families are well. Uh, as many of you know, here in Lenawee County, the numbers have gone way up uh, with the COVID-19. And I know across the state of Michigan and many other states as well. So I hope that everyone is doing well, is safe, their families are safe. And uh, let's continue to do all that we can to keep it that way. Uh, I know a lot of the schools have either been talking about going with distance learning or have already done that virtually, and I know that Tecumseh has done that at least through the 30th of November. Uh, they've decided to go virtual just as a precautionary uh, choice uh, to try to keep the students safe and the administration safe as well. So continue to pray for each family uh, and each person here in our communities and communities across this world uh, that will continue to be safe. But most importantly, let's pray that the Lord will touch and that the Lord will heal this pandemic and this situation that we're facing. And that through this, we will look to him as our strength. Because I tell you what, that's where our strength comes from, is from the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's continue to keep each other in prayer and do what we can uh, to make sure that we're uh, doing all that we can to stop the spread uh, of this virus, both locally and globally. So thank you for being here. Also at our church, we now have a... And I'll mention this again throughout the broadcast. We now have a uh, sanitation station in our uh, welcome center just outside the main auditorium. So what we ask is, and you'll, you'll be able to clearly see it uh, tomorrow if you join with us in service, we ask that you use that uh, before you enter the main auditorium just as an extra precaution. I know for a while we had the pump uh, hand sanitizer bottles throughout the church and due to cross-contamination, we don't want, you know, everybody touches that. And so... Uh, we just want to make sure that we're doing what we can to make sure we cut down on that. Uh, so be sure to use that. You'll be able to see it when you get there. It's fully touchless. All you got to do is put your hand under it, and it'll uh, place hand sanitizer right in the palm of your hand. 
And so uh, that way there is no touching of a surface and it should, uh, you know, make it a lot safer and a lot more convenient for everyone to be able to use that. So thank you so much for all that you do, those of you that come to church and, and do what you can to keep everyone safe around you by wearing a mask, by uh, doing whatever needs to be done uh, to protect not only yourself, but those that are around you in the sanctuary as well. And we want to thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, as always, uh, like I said before at the beginning of the broadcast, put your prayer requests, praise reports, testimonials, question, comments, whatever you might have right there in the comment section. Uh, I think we're running a little behind or people have, have forgotten that we have prayer service on Saturday. Uh, but uh, either way, I know that they will probably watch this video later. And uh, they will, if you're watching it later, uh, even after we're not live anymore, you can continue to put your prayer requests and praise reports, testimonials, that kind of thing right there in the comment section. And uh, I won't be able to read them because it won't be live. But if you do it live, I'll try to, my best to get to that uh, and uh, get those read. So I'm going to give people a few more minutes. And like I said, if you are watching us, I know my sister's watching us. Hey, I love you. Me and dad are, are so glad to have you with us and be able to join with us here on Facebook Live. Uh, as far as everybody else, I'm not sure what happened. It got dark. Maybe they went to sleep uh, or whatever it was, or they just forgot, or maybe in their mind they had something more important to do. Uh, than to spend a little time with the Lord and in prayer with the Lord, which is sad for Christians that find other things more important than to spend time with the Lord. But hey, that's on them, and that's something they'll have to uh, answer the Lord about. So uh, if you, uh, we're going to give you a few more minutes, everybody. If there's nobody that logs on, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and thank Him for what He's done. And uh, for those of you that missed out on the live broadcast, well, that's on you. Maybe next time you'll get here at 6 o'clock. So we're going to give everybody a few more minutes. I'm going to run a few things past you about the Weekend Word podcast. Uh, it's available. We have our own Facebook page, at The Weekend Word, or you can find us on iTunes or on PodPoint. Those are the two main places uh, that you can find us really simple. Uh, you can go to our church website at adrianffwb.org, click on the podcast link, and be able to download episodes, uh, past episodes all the way up to the newest episode and be able to listen to those on the go wherever you are. So I'm going to run a couple of promos past you, and we'll be right back. Right. Hey, Aunt Joy, good to see you. Hope you and Uncle Jim are doing well and uh, that you had a safe trip back from seeing Uncle David and Aunt Sherry. Hope they are doing well as also and uh, as we continue to pray for them and continue to pray for you guys as well. But thank you for joining with us this evening. Uh, as I was saying at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, we have a uh, change up a little bit at the uh, some of the things we're doing at the church. We now have a sanitation station that we added. Uh, to that, hold on just one second. We have a phone call, and let me get to that right now. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Hi, it's your sister. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just, I want to take this opportunity to let everybody know that I look forward to these prayer services and, and Sunday morning services online, because for me, it's the only way I can have church, because I can't get out. And I absolutely just love it. I love uh, praying to God. I, I love talking to God. I tell you what, it's, I, I look forward to prayer services. And I just want to say I'm, I'm so thankful for them. I'm thankful for what you've done on, online and, and, and have provided this for people. I tell you what, I, I just think it's, it's a great thing, and, and I don't want to ever miss it. So I'm just so thankful, and I love God so much. And I just want to say I love the Lord, and I love you and Dad. I love, I, I just, I, I just, Thank the Lord that you, you, you two have done so much for the church <coughs> and so much with this online service. I'm just so thankful. And and I just want to say I love being a Christian. I say I, I just love waking up in the morning and, and having God in my life. 
And I, I, I just don't know what I would do if I didn't have him. I, I'd be lost if I didn't have him. So I just wanted to say I just, I just love you guys, and I love the Lord so very much. I really do, and I look forward to these services. So God bless both of you. I just, I just think the world of you. We love you too. <laughs> All right. Thank you, honey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, I tell you what, man, it's it's awesome to be able to do this online and uh, to be able to, to, to uh, just join with each and every one of you. And uh, let me turn these monitors down. I think I'm getting a little feedback. But I am so thankful to be able to do, and I know Dad is as well, that we can come online here and, and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ on Saturday evenings. We can pray together. We can lift up the name of the Lord together. We can praise together, be thankful together, and bless together of what God has done for us each and every one of us. And I know that it is a pleasure to be able to join with each and every one of you. And uh, even though I can't see you, I can see you in the comments, but I can't see you personally. Uh, but I'm thankful to join together virtually. I know we used to do this service uh, every Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. We do it in church and uh, we would gather together and we would uh, lift up our needs to the Lord and pray together as a church. And I know one day we will be able to get back to doing this. But I had a friend of mine say to me the other day, um, he said to me, he said, you know, he said, it's a good thing to be able to have that for people who are shut-ins and people who are unable to get out and people who are unable to come to the church for whatever reason. And uh, he said, it's something that you should continue to do even after this pandemic is over. And I said to him, it's something we're absolutely going to continue doing even when this pandemic is over. Uh, we're still going to be able to bring the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to a worldwide platform. And so, you know, if you can find one thing that... that that has come out of this pandemic that you can find as positive. And I know it's hard to find things. But the one thing that we as a church ha have found that's positive is it has opened up an opportunity uh, to be able to do live broadcasts here online and to be able to bring uh, the Adrian First Free Will Baptist Church to, a, to an online platform. And so we're so thankful for that. And uh, we're looking forward to one day being able to gather together mask-free and be able to hug necks again and shake hands and, and have that close uh, uh, personal relationship with one another again. We're looking forward to that. And I know that that's going to be sooner than later. I know that it will be. We just need to stay faithful in the Lord and stay trusting that everything's going to work out the way that he intends it to. And uh, I tell you what, we are going to be able to get back to a normal uh, life one day. I know that sometimes we joke, you know, what what's what exactly is normal? Because we've been nine months in the way that we are right now. and uh, But you know what? It's coming. One day it's coming. We're going to be able to gather together again and be able to uh, show that friendship and closeness that we used to share together. So I'm looking forward to those days of being able to hug necks and shake hands again and gather together without a mask and to be able to do all of those things that, I, you know, if you're like me, that you took for granted uh, until one day you just weren't able to do it anymore. And so... I'm thankful to the Lord that he's kept uh, not only myself, but my family safe and healthy. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm thankful for the many blessings that God has given me on a daily basis. A lot of things that I take for granted and overlook. And I'm so thankful for all that he has done for me and for my family. But we said uh, earlier there was a sanita sanitation station before the phone call. Uh, now at the church, it's just in the welcome center near the restrooms. Uh, it's clearly marked on the wall. You'll be able to see it when you come into the church tomorrow morning. Uh, it's fully touchless. All you have to do is place your hand under it, and it will release uh, hand sanitizer into your hand. We ask that everyone do that before they enter the main auditorium. Uh, we're trying to do all that we can to stop the spread of COVID uh, right here in Lenawee County. And uh, as everyone says, it starts with one person. So let's start as a group. Let's do that before we enter the church. Uh, and make sure that we're doing all that we can to keep one another safe. And I said this at the beginning, that I'm thankful for everything that each and every one of you have done uh, to not only uh, uh, take care of yourself, but to help those around you in wearing a mask when you go to church, uh, social distancing when you're at church. And, uh, you know, I know it's tough not being able to be close with one another and to be able to talk as much as we used to, but uh, we appreciate all that you do. Those that clean the church and sanitize the church, uh, and make sure that it is healthy and safe for everyone to be able to be there on Sunday morning. And uh, we're just appreciative to everything that you all do. And uh, 
you know, just taking care of one another. And, and I know that sometimes it can get frustrating wearing a mask. I know I wear one for eight hours a day at work. And, you know, it can get frustrating. And, and I know I complain. But I am thankful to do what I can, not only to protect myself, but those that I work with and those that are around me. So thank you guys so much for all that you do. Hey, Sister Beverly, thank you for joining with us this evening. It's good to have you joined in here and, and, and spending some time with us. It's so awesome to have you here. And uh, it says, uh, thank you for doing this. Hey, it's my pleasure. Me and Dad absolutely enjoy being able to come here online and, and share God's word. And we love you, and we love each and every one of you that have joined with us. And uh, I pray it's a blessing to you guys as well. Hey, uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer here in just a minute. But go ahead and, you know, I got a prayer list back here behind me. And I try to write down all the prayer requests uh, that have been posted uh, in past broadcasts. And I'm hoping each and every one of you do the same and pray over these prayer requests for one another. Because the Bible says, pray ye one for another. And so it is our responsibility as Christians and followers of Jesus Christ to pray for one another. I've said it before, Dad has said it many a time, that until the problems of others become important enough to where they feel as if they are your problems, that's when we truly will pray the way that we should be praying. We should pray for each need as if it is our own. And we should feel for those individuals that are going through some things. There are many people tonight all across this world, maybe right here even in Lenawee County, that are dealing with a loved one that has COVID or a loved one that has passed away from it. And we need to be praying for them, uh, that the Lord will help them, that the Lord will strengthen them, and the Lord will guide them. And you know, it's, it's you say, yeah, but you know, people don't want to believe in the Lord, and you know, that's their decision. But regardless, our responsibility is to pray for them. Our responsibility is to care about them. I said last Saturday that we need to be real Christians and we need to, to do what God has called us to do. And I believe that's to pray one for another, regardless of whether that person you know, even cares that you're praying for them or whether that person even believes in God. Our responsibility is to pray for them. Aunt Joyce has continued prayers for Dave. He is, in a, little, he is a little better some days. Well, that's good to hear that he's a little better some days. And we're going to continue to pray for him that he will be completely better. And we are trusting in God that God's going to answer in a mighty way. And we're trusting in a miracle for that. So let's continue to pray for my Uncle David and for my Aunt Sherry. Let's continue to pray for uh, our churches all across this nation and all across this world that still preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let's pray for the churches that are, are playing around. Let's pray for the churches that are in it for themselves. Let's, the, let's pray for the self-called preachers. That God will wake them up to the fact that there's things they need to be doing. And they need to straighten up and get back into the word of God and start preaching the truth that brings salvation through a cross and the precious blood that was shed at a place called Calvary. Let's pray that we will continue to preach the message of Jesus Christ without sugarcoating it and without apologizing. Because it is the, the, the power of God that brings salvation. And I'll tell you what, we need to be preaching it. We need to sh be sharing it. And we need to be uplifting it and showing the world what it is to be a real Christian. So let's continue to pray for our churches. And uh, let's continue to pray for our frontline workers, our hospitals, uh, our doctors, our nurses, our hospital staff. Let's continue to pray that the Lord will protect and guide them and strengthen them. Let's pray for our school teachers, our administrators, the students all across this, this great nation and all across this world that they will be protected as they go to school, and that they will be protected as they go home. And so let's pray for them. Let's pray for our first responders, our police, our firemen, our EMS, those on the front line, putting their lives on the line to take care of the communities in which they live. Let's continue to pray for them. Let's continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones, those that they have had to say goodbye to, those that they loved and cared about, that the Lord will help them to be able to continue on with each and every day. Let's continue to remember my wife. She is, uh, she, as I said last week, she passed her uh, licensing exam uh, with the state of Michigan. So she is now a registered nurse. And so after all of the hard work that she put in in school for about 15 to 16 months and uh, all of the hard work she put into studying, and I'll tell you what, being a nurse, I could not do it. And I said this last week, and uh, what they have to do and what they have to know 
And uh, I tell you what, it, she, is, she has done a lot of hard work to get where she is today. And so let's continue to pray for her as she looks and sees what her opportunities are uh, out in the workforce. And uh, she can find what works best for her in the job that she will absolutely enjoy. And so let's continue to pray for her. But I'm so thankful uh, for, the, for the blessings that God has provided me and my family. And uh, Aunt Joy says, pray for Jim and I. Absolutely every day we do. And we will continue to do so. We love you guys. And uh, I don't know if I'm missing anybody from my list. Let me turn around here and see. All of our military and families, our communities and neighborhoods, our missionaries, let's continue to pray for them as well. And what I'm about ready to say probably won't make too many people happy, but that's okay because God said we are to pray for our world leaders. And let's pray for our president-elect, Joe Biden. However you look at that is unimportant. Okay, I want you to understand something really very quickly. Regardless of who is in the White House, Jesus Christ is still king. Jesus Christ still has things under control. Jesus Christ has never lost control, and he never will. And so I want us to understand something. You may not agree with him. You may not agree with his stance, and there's things I don't agree with him on. But the fact is we need to pray for him. We need to pray for him that the Lord will guide him. Now, put all politics aside. This is not what this is about. It's politics, so put that aside. I don't want any comments on it. I don't want it. That's not what this is for. This is for praying for our world and for our nation, and that's exactly what we're going to do. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Because I stand for what the Bible says, and I stand for what God teaches, and God teaches to pray for those in authority over us. And I respect the office of the President of the United States. I may not always agree with the individual, male or female, that sits behind the desk. I may not always see eye to eye with the policies and, and things they set forth. But I respect the office of the president. And therefore, I will pray for the president. Whether I voted for them or not, I will pray for them. Because that's what Jesus Christ asked us to do. All politics aside, I pray that January the 21st, Joe Biden is led by the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that he has a change of heart in his life. But that's between him and God. But my responsibility is to pray for him, that he'll make the right decisions for this country. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, you may not agree with me. You may say, that's not my president. Well, that's your decision. At the end of the day, I'm going to pray for him. And I know my dad's going to pray for him. Because that's what God called us to do. And I'll be the first to say it. You couldn't run fast enough to give me the job of the president. I wouldn't want that kind of responsibility. I wouldn't want that kind of a weight on me. But if I was sitting behind that desk, whether you agreed with me or not, I would hope that the Christians were praying for me. I would hope that they had enough of the Holy Spirit in their life to lay their petty politics aside and pray for me. Because when it comes to what Jesus Christ told us to do, <clears throat> politics need to set aside. We need to do what Jesus has told us to do. And he has said, pray for those in authority over us. He says in his word, to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. Now for those of you that know the Bible and know your history, Caesar was not a good person. He was not the person that somebody would sit on a pedestal and say he was the... Uh, he was the blueprint of what a good human being would be. Because he wasn't. But Jesus didn't pick at that. He was very clear at what he said. We are to pray for those that are in authority. Whether you agree with them or whether you don't. My question to you is, do you serve God? If your answer is yes, then you'll do what God told you to do. And you'll leave it at that. Let God iron out the details. Let God figure out the issues. Let God change what needs to be changed. And let us be silent and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and pray for those that are in authority. Pray for those that use us. Pray for those who disrespect us. Pray for those who hate us. Pray for those who overlook us, mistreat us, Use us, manipulate us, and whatever else. Because that's what we're supposed to do.
Let God figure out everything else. You do what God has told you to do. And that's what I'm going to do is what God has told me to do. You say, yeah, but you know, if I don't fight the system and I don't speak out, look, guys, that's never changed anything. What changes the world is when we as Christians come together. Now hear me. Come together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and do what God has told us to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Nowhere in there was politics written. Nowhere. The White House, let me put it to you this way. And, and I'll be the first to say it. I'm a conservative Republican based upon the values in which they stand for. Not the individual that sits behind the desk. Not the individual that sits in the Oval Office. That is not what I am uh, attracted to. I am attracted as a conservative voter to the values of that party according to the standards set by God. Period. There is no one man or no woman sitting there that's going to save you and I. Not one person is going to change the way this country is moving. That falls solely upon the shoulders of you and I. That falls solely upon the heart of the individual. And the only person that can change the heart of an individual is Jesus Christ, the one who died for us. You want America to be different, Christian? Let's start being Christian. You want America to start being more of the values of Jesus Christ and his word? Let's pray. Let's stop being childish. Let's stop fighting with each other. Let's stop making everything a political view and start doing what God has called us to do. If you're going to claim to be a Christian, then be one. It's not a political party. If you are saying, I'm a Christian because I'm a Republican, you've forgotten what it is to be a Christian. Being a Republican or being a Democrat doesn't make you nothing. Nothing. What makes you something is Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed at Calvary. If that's applied to your heart, that's all that matters. I am sick to death of Christians getting on their high horse and their soapbox and, and throwing out there, well, you know, you're not this if you don't vote a certain way. Guys, grow up. Our country is the way it is right now because of that mentality. Now, you may never talk to me again, and that's your choice. Truthfully, I don't really care. But the fact is, is that I'm sick of people basing more of their life on a political party than on Jesus Christ and his word. When Jesus comes back one day and, and, and we get to leave here, thank God for that. I'm looking for that day. But when we leave here to stand before God, do you honestly think, anybody that's listening to me right now, I want to ask you a question. When you stand before God, do you think he's going to look at you and say, uh, well, so-and-so, uh, what political party were you? I'll wait while you comment that. No, he's not. Because it doesn't matter. What matters is, is the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart and life. If we shared God's word as much as we fight and argue about political processes, why? There wouldn't be a single person that wouldn't know who Jesus Christ was. We spend more time on Facebook debating each other on our political values than we ever have sharing God's word. This past election and the, the quote-unquote fraud and all this kind of stuff, it was every single day multiple people on my friends list, that's all they shared. Not one that claimed to be a Christian shared about Jesus Christ. Not one. It was about voter fraud. It was about this. It was about that. It was about everything else but what they claimed to be, which is a Christian. How about we share Jesus Christ? How about we share that there are people right now at 629 on November the 14th, 2020, that have stepped off into eternity unprepared to meet Jesus Christ and are in a place called hell right now. Why don't we share those numbers? I'll tell you why. Because it makes us understand that we have shortfalled the Lord Jesus Christ. We have failed him. Because, hey, I was fighting the system. Guys, let me tell you something. There are people every minute, every day, 
that are leaving this world in droves that aren't ready to meet Jesus Christ. So how about we put down our political stick and we pick up the word of God and share that with them? Why don't we get on our knees before God and say, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me for losing focus and vision on what was important. Help me to be a better Christian. I'm going to ask you this. And then I'm going to go back to the comments. And that's going to be the end of what I've just said. Because I want you to think about it. But I'm going to ask you a very simple question. If Jesus Christ was walking the earth today, do you think he'd be doing what most of us are doing with the politics situation? Do you think he would? Do you think he'd get on Facebook in a rant and a rave and say what a lot of us that claim to be Christians are saying? Do you think he'd be okay with us putting down the word of God and progressing forward with our arguments? I know the answer to that. But do you? Jesus Christ came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You will never save an individual debating politics. You'll never save an individual disrespecting them in their life. You'll never save somebody by looking down on them, pointing out everything they've done wrong. There's only one way to save somebody. And his name is Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Christian, let's be real. There's a world outside these walls that need Jesus Christ. They don't need your political view. It's wonderful to have a political view. And that's part of the wonderful part of being an American. is having the right to vote and the right to have a stance on what you believe. But when it comes to what Jesus Christ has commissioned us to do, those things aren't important. What is important is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. Now you may say, you know what, that's pretty harsh what you said. Yeah, it probably was. But all of us need to wake up to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming. Ready or not, he's coming. Now, what are we going to do with the time that we got left? What are we going to do? Let's make sure we're using that time wisely and doing all that we can for Jesus Christ. My dad and myself will always tell you the truth. It may not make you feel good. It may sometimes feel like sandpaper. But we do it because we love you, and we care about you, and your eternity matters to us. Because Jesus Christ called us to tell you the truth. His word says it cuts like a two-edged sword. It means it'll cut going in, and sometimes it cuts coming out. Not every message you hear and not every time you read God's word is it going to feel real good. But I thank God for the times that it feels bad because it gets me to look into my life and focus on the things that I need to change, things I need to do better. Let's lift one another up. The world's full of tearing down. Let's lift each other up. Let's help one another. Let's be there for each other. We've been separated for nine months. The world doesn't need any more separation. What the world needs now is hope. Let's share that. Hey, hey, Lori, hope you and Bob are doing well. It says uh, continue prayers for Bob. Absolutely, we will continue praying for him. I hope you guys are well. Hope Chad and Jeremy and their families are safe and healthy as well. And uh, we love you guys and uh, look forward to one day getting to be able to see you. So uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, also, I want to invite everyone that's on, our, on the comment list and maybe watching the videos to join with us tomorrow at 11 o'clock. 
Uh, come and be with us in person church service, 11 a.m., 3240 Sharp Road in Adrian. And I know it will be a blessing to you. Um, turn that down a little bit so I'm not getting any echo from the monitors. But uh, come and be with us, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, wear your mask. And uh, come on in and put some hand sanitizer on, you know, grease up your hands and come on in and we'll have a, excuse me, we'll have a good time in the Lord, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, 3240 Sharp Road. If you're unable to be with us, we have the broadcast that'll be live here on Facebook, 3 p.m. It'll be the uh, recorded uh, service from that morning. We'll broadcast live right here on Facebook at 3 p.m. So if you're not able to be with us at 11 a.m. tomorrow, you can join with us from the comfort of your own home, in your recliner, in your couch, at your desk, wherever you are, at 3 p.m. and be able to check out the service from that morning. Hey guys, I'll tell you what, <coughs> it is always a blessing. I look forward to it. Saturday seemed to come pretty quick though. You know, the, the week went by kind of slow, it felt like to me, but then I thought, man, it's already Saturday again. You know, I look forward to coming up here and being a part of these services and being able to spend time with each and every one of you and being able to share what God has laid on my heart. And uh, I hope that through these, you know, 30-minute services that or 45-minute, whatever they are, that uh, it brings a little joy to your life and a little hope to your life as well and lifts you up wherever you are. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's my hope and that's my goal is that, uh, you know, God's Word lifts you up. And I know that it does. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be able to be with you and to bring God's word to you. It's always a pleasure and an honor of mine to be able to do that. I want to scroll through and make sure I didn't miss anybody in the comments. Uh, Brother Marcy, that's right. Thank you, Sister Beverly, for that. Uh, Brother Marcy uh, has come to our church quite a few times, and uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. And uh, he has he was hospitalized there for a little while with COVID-19, and he was not doing very well. But uh, we heard today that uh, what was it they were sending him home tomorrow, tomorrow hopefully they're going to send him home on oxygen uh, so that is a a wonderful uh, uh, uptick from where he was uh, because he was not able to breathe and he was in the in the ICU I believe it was or at the hospital there and he wasn't doing well but through the prayers of so many uh, thank the good Lord that he is doing much better and that uh, possibly you'll be able to go home tomorrow on oxygen. So please continue to remember Brother Marcy uh, and his family. And uh, I, he's, a, he's an awesome guy. And I really love that brother. And I'm hoping that the Lord will continue to bless and the Lord will touch. And there are so many uh, that are dealing with this disease. Whether Whatever your views are on it, uh, you know, that's, that's your decision. But the fact is there are so many people that are suffering with that and have suffered through it. And many that have recovered, and we're so thankful for that number of recoveries, uh, not, not just here at home, but all across the world, the, the millions that have recovered uh, from COVID. And we pray that that, that number, that, that number, the recoveries number, will continue to go up. And that's the number we want to go up, is the people recovering and, and healing from that. And so let's continue to pray for those affected by that disease. Also, let's continue to pray for the vaccine that we are told should be out sometime next month. That is, that is great news. Now, however you feel on that, again, that's your decision. Um, but uh, I'm thankful uh, for the uh, people in this world that have the knowledge to be able to do those things. And uh, I, I'm not one of them, but I'm thankful for those people that have the knowledge to be able to uh, put together these things and do what they can to help uh, the communities and the, and, the, and the population. So pray about that. Pray about that, that when this vaccine comes out, that it will help people, that it will protect us and protect people uh, from this horrible disease. So just continue to pray about that. They're saying sometime next month, um, early next month, sometime early to mid next month uh, is when they're talking about it. And whatever your views are on that, that, that's up to you. Again, we're not here to debate things like that. That's not what this is about. We're here to pray uh, that God's will will be done in every situation. And so let's pray for the vaccine. Let's pray for those that are uh, uh, doing all that they can to make sure that they can try to bring an end uh, to this pandemic. So let's continue to pray for that. As always, uh, let's pray one for another. And so as we go to prayer here in just a few moments, let's remember all of the prayer requests, not only posted here tonight, 
but post it here every single week. Let's continue to pray for those. And as always, if you have an answer to prayer, let's say you had a prayer request before and God answered that prayer, we would love to rejoice and praise with you. And we would love for you to go ahead and leave us a comment to let us know what God has answered in your life and the needs that God has provided. So before we go to the Lord in prayer, what I'd like to do is invite each and every person listening to us right now that they will put in the comment section what God has done for them, what God has answered for them. Maybe it was this week, maybe it was this month, maybe it was this year, something that you'd been praying about that God has given you an answer and has provided for you. We would love to hear what God has done and and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer here in just a few moments. But go ahead and put those in the comment section. We'd love to be excited and thankful uh, for your needs that were met and the answers to your prayers together. So go ahead and put those in and uh, I'll give you just a few moments and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Hey, Sister Mary, good to have you with us. Uh, pray for my son. He burned his back quite bad. Absolutely. We will absolutely do that. We're going to go to the Lord here in just a minute in prayer. And uh, so remember uh, Sister Mary's son. He burned his back quite bad. So we'll add that to our list as well. Hopefully you are safe and doing well, Sister Mary. It's good to have you with us. And uh, I'll tell you what, God is good all the time. That's our saying at the church. And so another saying at our church is praise God's healing power. And I'll tell you what, God is still healing. And God is still working miracles. The problem is we as Christians have stopped asking or stopped believing. And so tonight we go to the Lord in prayer. I remember what my dad used to say on Saturday mornings when we'd pray together in the church. Before you pray, make sure that what you're going to pray for, you believe that God's going to answer. So tonight when we go to the Lord in prayer, don't just pray the words. Let's pray as we bring these needs to the Lord that he's going to answer these needs. And we are believing in faith together. In one mind, in one accord, that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to answer our needs. Hey, Sister Mary, we'll see you tomorrow morning as well. And uh, be safe and have a wonderful evening. But let's pray to the Lord together right now, wherever you are, as we pray together for the needs that we have listed here tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we're thankful for this wonderful opportunity again. To be able to gather together here on Facebook, dear God, with each and every one of these wonderful Wonderful people that have joined with us tonight, dear God. There's prayer requests listed here tonight, dear God, one for my Uncle David. You know the need, dear Jesus, and I pray that you are going to continue to touch and continue to heal, and we're expecting a miracle, dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Dear God, we pray for my Aunt Joy and my Uncle Jim. Dear God, that your will be done in their life, dear Jesus, and that you bring about healing and peace, dear God, I pray. We pray for Brother Bob, dear God. You know the need there, dear Jesus. And we're praying right now, dear God, for a touch in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're believing in faith that that's already begun. We're praying for Sister Mary's son, dear God, and the burn that he has on his back. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we're praying for healing to begin. And that you will bring uh, 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 peace and, and healing to his back, dear Jesus, I pray. Dear God, be with those that... All over this world, dear God, that are dealing with this sickness or of dealing with a loss of someone due to this or many other health concerns. I pray, dear God, that you will bring about a healing and you'll help them, dear God, each and every day to be able to move forward. Dear God, I pray that you'll be with this vaccine that they're saying is coming out in December. I pray, dear God, that it will be healthy for individuals to take and that it will do what it was intended to do and protect us, dear God, I pray. But most importantly, dear God, we know that our healing and protection comes from you. And dear God, we're thankful for all that you have done for us. We pray more importantly, dear God, that we as a nation will turn back to you, dear Jesus. 
And that you, we will ask you to forgive us for what we have done. Dear God, I pray that you'll be with us as Christians. That we'll lay aside our little differences, dear God, and that we'll share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we'll do it with love and anointing and conviction. I pray, dear God, you'll help us to show the world who you really are. And that we will do what you commissioned us to do when you told your disciples to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I pray, dear God, that that's what we will do. I pray, dear Jesus, that you'll be with us. You'll keep us safe. You'll guide us every day. And I pray that you'll be with those who are going to watch this video later, dear Jesus, and the prayer requests that they will add. I pray that you'll bless them and that you'll touch their families and their needs and keep them safe. Dear God, we love you for all that you've done. And we love you because you are who you are. And we're thankful for a place called Calvary. And we will forever praise you, worship you, and love you. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And everyone said, Amen. I want to thank you guys again for being with us. <coughs> and for joining with me this evening. And my dad as well. He's over there in the passenger seat. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, we, we enjoy being able to come and be with you guys every day and uh, every Saturday. We'd love to do it every day, and, uh, but every weekend, being able to be with you guys uh, on Saturday evenings and again on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock. But uh, I'll tell you what, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys for all that you do on a daily basis, all of your prayers, all of your love, phone calls, whatever it is that you do. We are so thankful for you just being you. Because you're awesome just the way you are. God bless you guys. I love you. On behalf of my dad and myself. May the Lord bless you this evening. May the Lord bless you tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you in person in church. 11 o'clock, 3240 Sharp Road in Adrian, Michigan. Come on out and be with us. And I know it will be a blessing to you. Until then, have a great rest of your evening. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.